What is up meal prepping family? It's Bobby and last week I asked you what kind of meal prep you want to see going forward. And there were some awesome ideas which means Desi and I are going to be crazy busy the next few weeks. But I chose Whole30 meal prep because I believe in that diet plan. But even if you're not on Whole30, think of this recipe like crazy clean eating with crazy monster flavors. So I hope you guys are ready for shrimp and roasted cauliflower curry meal prep. Oven roasted cauliflower tossed in a coconut curry sauce and finished with walnuts and raisins and crusty shrimp in a garlic orange sauce. So here's the deal. If you love straight up awesome meal prepping that is good and good for you and doesn't tease you with clickbait of some girl's boobies on the thumbnail or some guy's biceps too, then you click on the video and it turns out to be bland chicken, boring rice and boring broccoli Click subscribe, you guys. We're rocking out creative, delicious recipes every Friday morning, and I would love for you to join the Flav City community. All right, to get this recipe started, I have two heads of medium-sized cauliflower in front of me. I'm gonna season it with a couple teaspoons of avocado oil. Pinch over just over a half a teaspoon of salt, a few cracks of black pepper. And then I usually only have dried thyme, but I did pick up some fresh thyme at the market. And then run your finger the opposite way that the leaves grow, and the leaves just fall right off. I'm scattering over about a teaspoon of fresh, but if you only have dried, use half. That stuff is strong. Debling, and then just mix up everything really well. And preheat your oven to 450 degrees. We're going fast and furious style because when you roast cauliflower at high temperatures, it gets crazy, kind of caramelized on the outside and really, really creamy on the inside. It's unbelievable. Did I oversell that cauliflower a little too much? <laughs> All right, pop this guy in the oven for about 25 to 30 minutes. All right, friends, while the cauliflower is doing its thing, let's get cracking on the coconut curry sauce. I'm gonna preheat a pan over medium heat and then drizzle in some olive oil. Let's do trivia question number one for the week. I used avocado oil before for the roasting in the oven and now I'm gonna drizzle in a couple teaspoons of olive oil. Desi's wondering where this is going. Leave a comment below if you know why I use different oils, in this case, olive and avocado for two different applications. And then go in with one onion that I finely diced. Pinch in a quarter teaspoon of salt and a couple of cracks of black pepper. Oh, by the way, this recipe is pretty much 100% keto also, except for one ingredient which comes in way later on. So if you're hoping for a keto recipe too, pretty much consider this a twofer because it's keto and whole 30. I like to hook up my friends whenever they ask for it, all right? So give that a mix. I'm gonna let it go for about five minutes to give it a head start, and then we'll throw in some ginger and some garlic. Now go in with three cloves of garlic that are finely minced, and then break down some ginger by peeling it with a spoon, and then grating it with a microplaner. That way it turns into a pulp, and then add about a teaspoon to the pan. Next up, it's time for the curry powder. I'm gonna use Madras curry powder. And if you look inside the bag here, you can see it's a yellow curry powder. It has a fair amount of turmeric in there, which I want but I actually want this to be even more vibrantly yellow. So I'm gonna kind of supplement that with some ground turmeric. So go ahead and tip in a tablespoon of the curry powder and then half a teaspoon of the turmeric powder. And then give it a mix. And this is like the most important part of the recipe. Think about it. Those spices have been sitting in the old pantry for a couple months. The flavors might be a little asleep, right? They've been on a siesta. So if I cook them with the fat over heat, I'm essentially blooming the essential oils in the curry powder and turmeric and bringing all those flavors back to life and it really elevates the flavor big time. So do it for about one minute. You can already smell. Here, Dusty, smell. No, no. It smells good, see? It already smells like a little Mumbai in here and we're getting tons of flavor. So next ingredient is coconut milk. You can use low fat if you want, but I'm using full fat because I love that rich, creamy body. So go ahead and tip in a cup and then look what happens immediately. The coconut milk gets dyed yellow by that turmeric and the curry powder. Now I do want a little bit of heat in there. I could add red chili flakes, but I have these little long red chili peppers that I love. I'm gonna grab my knife and just finely slice about half of it and add that to the pan. All right, next up I have chicken stock because if I'm using light coconut milk, I don't need it because the difference between light coconut milk and full fat is water. It's just much more watery. This is thicker, so I want to tip in a half a cup of chicken stock. Is that whole 30? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
good question. Desi's on the bar, I like that. The Whole30 police is in the his zone, nice babe. But make sure it's a Whole30 chicken stock. It can't have any MSG, any sugar, any caramel colorings. It's best to use your own or there's a handful of brands out there you can buy. All right, bring this guy to a simmer and then I'm just gonna let it reduce until it's nice and thick and saucy. All right, I'm putting the sauce back here and we can move on to the shrimp part of the meal prep. Before we cook this beautiful shrimp that I have in the fridge, we first have to make the garlicky sour orange glaze. To do that, I'm preheating a little pot here. I'm gonna add a couple teaspoons of olive oil, then add two cloves of garlic that are finely sliced, and then add a teaspoon of freshly chopped thyme. That's the original Snap Crackle Pop. All right, so that is exactly what you wanna see, right? The thyme is literally bursting with flavor and infusing the olive oil with all that yummy flavor. I wanna toast that garlic for just a minute, and then I'm gonna add tangerine juice, which you can do OJ, but I saw tangerine juice at the store, and that is just so darn awesome. Just make sure it's pure OJ or pure tangerine juice. It can't have added sugar or anything like that for Whole30, and a little bit of lime juice. So add about two thirds a cup of tangerine juice or orange juice, then slice a couple slices of lime, and add that to the pot, along with just a quarter teaspoon of salt and a few cracks of pepper. Thank you. We're sauce crazy. I don't think we've ever made two sauces in one meal prep video. I'm gonna let that go and reduce and get sticky and then add a little bit of uh, tapioca starch to thicken it up. Still waiting for my coconut curry sauce to thicken up back there. And it is time to yank the cauliflower from the oven and see how beautiful that is. All right, you guys, look at this cauliflower. This is what I was talking about before. The exterior is nice and browned and it's kind of charred in spots, but inside it's very, very creamy. This is awesome. All right, let's swap the sauces because the coconut curry sauce is just about done. Look at this, you guys. It thickened up really nicely. The color is just downright gorgeous. But to make this even better, I'm gonna stir in a little bit of coconut cream. It's really not that fatty, but it's gonna make the sauce so luscious and so creamy. So let's start with one tablespoon. And it adds a really nice color to the sauce. Now, we're missing one flavor component in here. We have sweet coconut milk. I added salt while it was cooking. We have chilies for spice. What is it? Desi, what is it? Acid. Acid, that's right, baby. A little squeeze of lime juice will round out the flavors perfectly. So let's add maybe a teaspoon of lime juice to start. Oh, that's good. Dude, that is the perfectly spiced. It's crazy creamy, but it's chunky monkey, right? There's a lot of onions and garlics and chilies in there. I want it creamy, and I wanna put that creamy waterfall all over the cauliflower. So let me grab a little bowl and then strain the golden elixir right through a strainer into the bowl. And then use your spoon just to push it through the sieve. You get creamy sauce on one side and chunks on the other. With what? No, that's for this one. This one's the <laughs> Desi can't keep track of the sauces. See, two sauces is too much for one person. I'm gonna transfer the cauliflower to a bowl. And look at that, you guys. The pieces that are really caramelized like that, those are my favorite ones. Now drizzle over enough of the coconut curry sauce to coat. Shake over a tablespoon of chopped walnuts for crunch. A tablespoon of raisins for sweetness. And then some fresh herbs like parsley or cilantro to finish. And then give it a good mix up. Wait a second, hold on. We can't go through a video without some kind of zesting and we already had lime from before. So we grate over just a half a uh, lime. Ooh, you guys, as soon as that lime zest hits the hot cauliflower, Des, can you smell that? Not from over here. <laughs> wow. This could totally satisfy any vegan, vegetarian, or meat eater because the cauliflower is roasted and almost kind of nutty and meaty and that sauce. You can drizzle that sauce up on an old leather shoe and it would taste good. All right, this is done. All we have to do is finish up the glaze for the shrimp and cook the shrimp and we're done. To finish the sour orange glaze, I'm gonna fish out the lime slices and then stir together a teaspoon of tapioca starch with two teaspoons of water. That's a slurry. Add that to the simmering mixture. Then after a couple minutes, it thickens up really nicely and turns into a silky glaze. And tapioca starch is just like cornstarch. To activate the thickening power, you have to boil the mixture. All right, last thing to do is cook those shrimp and then we are done. All right, I've got one pound of shrimp right here. 
I patted them really well dry with paper towels and then put them in the fridge because if you want your shrimp to get crusty as can be, there can't be any moisture on there. So I'm preheating a large nonstick pan over medium high heat. I'm gonna drizzle in a couple teaspoons of avocado oil. Add half of the shrimp to a bowl. Add a pinch of salt, half a teaspoon of smoked paprika, and a tiny drizzle of avocado oil. I'm gonna mix it all up. Then add the shrimp to the pan, put them in one single layer, and slap down the splatter guard. Splatter guard because the oil will go everywhere and only half the shrimp at first because I don't want to overcrowd the pan. If you do that, the shrimp will end up boiling in their own juices. They won't get crusty as can be. I'm gonna give those shrimpies two minutes and then we'll flip them. Let's give the shrimp a flip. Perfect. See what I mean, you guys? Those shrimp right there are beautifully crusty. Now, I'm gonna go 30 more seconds on this side and then drizzle over the glaze. Take a few tablespoons of the glaze and just add it straight to the pan. It's gonna bumble up and look really angry, but just give it a good stir. The shrimp are gonna get coated in that sweet, sour, herby glaze. I'm gonna pick up the pan, Benihana style, give it a good flip. Oh, I wish Smell-O-Vision was enabled. Look at that. Woo! Sexy grub, baby. That's how we roll. Ooh, smells very good. That's what I like to hear. Let's get the second batch of shrimp in the pan. Cook them till they're crusty. Put that sticky glaze all over the shrimps. And then get them out of the pan. If you're doing this recipe as keto, you can't do the glaze because the orange juice is a keto carb bomb. Less talking, more eating. Let's plate this dish. I'm gonna scoop down some of the cauliflower curry salad. A nice handful of glazed shrimps. Sprinkle over some parsley and a few sliced red chilies. Now, come on, you guys. Click that like button if you think this is sexy AF grub. Those shrimp are shiny and glazed. That yellow roasted curry is calling my name. I gotta go in for one of these shrimp. I'm getting the stickiest one possible. Shrimp with the tail is classy, Jesse. Like me, a classy guy. Hey guys, shrimp are juicy, perfectly cooked. Smoked paprika, lovely. That glaze, sticky, sweet, and sour. It's a flavor bomb. Whole 30 or not, that is awesome. You need this in your belly. You need to hook me up and share this video and spread the Flav City love all across the internet and with your friends. If you want the macros, storage, and reheating instructions, they're always down in the description box like they always are. But I'll see you next week. Until then, keep on cooking. Peace.